Welcome to Electra Online. Some viewers asked me if we had some videos on second order derivatives and when I looked I realized not specifically here and there sprinkled around but not specifically in a chapter introducing you to second order derivatives or higher order derivatives so I thought it might be a good idea to add a few of those videos here. So let's start with our first video in which we're going to get a intuitive feel for what a second derivative is and we're going to apply it to the equations of motion. So what we have here is we have an equation that tells us the distance traveled equals our initial position when time equals zero plus when velocity is equal to zero times time plus one half at squared. And I should say velocity, what velocity is equal to when time is equal to zero. And so this gives us what we call one of the equations of motion. You can see that it's a second order equation, has t squared, so x, the distance traveled, depends upon the time squared. And if we take the derivative, the first derivative of that function, then we can say that the first derivative with respect to time, because whenever you take a derivative, you have to take it with respect to some other variable. In this case, it's distance with respect to time. And so that means the rate of change of x distance with respect to time. It tells us how fast the distance is changing as time is elapsing. And since this is a second order equation, that function gives you a parabola on an xt graph. And since it gets steeper and steeper and steeper, that means as time goes on, you're covering more and more distance more quickly. And it turns out that the first derivative of that function gives us the velocity. And also realizing that the first derivative of a function equals the slope of the function when it's graphed, you can see that in the beginning here, the slope is zero. Here the slope equals one, there the slope equals two, so the slope gets steeper and steeper. And that slope, which is the first derivative of x with respect to time, well, that represents then the velocity of the object. <laughs> Somebody just came home and her dogs went a little wild there. Okay, and this is the notation we use for the first derivative. The velocity is the derivative with respect to time of x. We could write it as dx dt or x prime. And we can see that if we take the derivative of this, since that's a constant, the derivative of the constant is zero. The derivative of v sub naught times t, v sub naught is a constant as well, so we just get v sub naught. And here we get two times one half, which is one times a, which is constant, times t to the first power, so simply get plus a t. So this is the first derivative of this function x with respect to time, which gives us the velocity. And the velocity is therefore equal to the slope of that function, and by definition the slope is the first derivative. But what if we take the derivative of the derivative? That's called the second derivative. So here we're graphing the first derivative. This is velocity as a function of time. That's what we have now, velocity as a function of time, which is v sub naught plus a t. So that is a, um, now let's assume that v sub naught is zero when we start out. So that simply it's a times t, which is a linear equation. It's kind of like y equals mx plus b. So the second derivative with respect to time, that's the rate of change of v. So that's the rate of change of the first derivative and the rate of change of the first derivative can be found by taking the derivative with respect to time of v, which is dv dt or v prime, or we can write it as the derivative with respect to time of the derivative of x with respect to time, which then gives us the second derivative of x with respect to time, and this is how we write that. That's We write the 2 on the d as an exponent, and we put the 2 on the t as an exponent. They're not exponents, that's just the way we write the second derivative of x with respect to time. And we call that the acceleration. The change of the velocity with respect to time is acceleration. So again, the derivative of anything, in this case the derivative of the velocity function, well that gives us the slope of the function. Now notice that slope is a straight line here, so the slope is a constant, and we'll call that the slope acceleration. That slope is then the acceleration of the motion and notice that since it doesn't change with time because the slope remains constant then we draw acceleration as a function of time and you can just see a straight line so that is a certain value, a constant value of the acceleration. So first derivative gives us the velocity. It's the derivative with respect to time of x. The second derivative 
is the derivative of the first derivative with respect to time. And of course, instead of v, we can write dx dt, because that's what v is equal to. And so it's the derivative of the derivative, which gives us the second derivative. And that means it's the rate of change of the derivative, or the second rate of change, so to speak, of the, of the initial function of the position. It's called the second derivative, of course. So it's the change of the change of the first function. And that's how we define the second derivative. Well, I never understood why they say d, d squared x dt squared. Why they write it like this? Yeah, there's two d's there. Well, if you look at it, look at the, just to the left of that, you have two d's and two dt's. Yes. That's why they do it. Yes. The reason, of course, is that this means that it's the second derivative. We don't put it on the x because that makes it look like it's dx squared, right? So that's why we put it there. But then, since we have the t over here, we then understand it's a derivative. I know it's a, it's a kind of a funky notation. Well, if you look at it, it makes sense. There's two dt's, there's the two d's, and only one x. Oh, yeah, that's true. Actually, that's the first time I kind of noticed yeah, that. I just noticed that, too. It's yeah, right? it's dt times dt, which is dt squared, and d times dx is two d's times x. Hey. We've been using it for so long and I realized that it makes sense. It also, if you write dx squared over dt squared, it also might give you the wrong connotation that they're exponents instead of derivatives. So that's, that's the way I always thought about no. it. No? No. I just wonder why do they do it that way? No, I just now, you, when you write it like this and like that, then you can see where the notation comes from. Yeah, you're right. Another discovery. <laughs>